it's become relatively clear to people who are really paying attention that uh, the economy and the way that it's married to the education system is a really important dynamic and that the American education system just hasn't changed and needs to. This is Brian Kaye for CalWatchdog.com, and I'm here with the Superintendent of Schools for the Douglas County School District, Liz Fagan. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. So what's the story behind this, uh, this turnaround in Douglas County? It's a long story, but in uh, 2009, uh, the citizens of Douglas County elected a slate of board members that uh, were committed to universal choice for students. They were committed to paying teachers like professionals and teaching and measuring the right things for students. And so that, that slate came in. Uh, about a year later, they hired me to be the superintendent. It was a, a really good match between uh, their vision for the district and what I believe in about education. And so I came in and together with my team wrote a plan for change uh, that we vetted in our community and with our stakeholders that involved uh, really allowing students and parents to choose from uh, everything from charter schools to any neighborhood school they wanted, magnet schools, and uh, we have the only in the country uh, some people call it a voucher system, we call it a scholarship program where our students can choose a private school and take part of their uh, state money to that school and, uh, and pay the tuition themselves. So that's part of the choice piece. And then uh, we worked on world-class education for every child and system performance which is really about uh, a accountability in education for the 21st century or what we call accountability 2.0, really rethinking the way that what we teach and how we measure it and then how we measure teachers and their performance also. And you were a teacher in the classroom, right? A science teacher. I was. I was a high school science teacher. And so did that, did you see from within the classroom the need for these types of changes and reforms? Well, over the years, I went from being a, a high school science teacher to a high school principal and then I supervised high school principals in Des Moines. Um, and as I went through that process, I started to understand the strengths of the public education system and the challenges. And um, it's become relatively clear to people who are really paying attention that uh, the economy and the way that it's married to the education system is a really important dynamic and that the American education system just hasn't changed and needs to. And so a lot of the, the things that we're doing are about completely reimagining and then reinventing American education for our students. So in your current position as superintendent, one of the more nationalized stories or controversial stories was that your board decided to let the collective bargaining agreement with the union expire. What impact did that have on the school district and, and what, what happened in that story? Well, we tried really hard to work together uh, with our teachers union and and frankly it just it wasn't working. Um, we had agreement together that we would work for student choice and then when we put together our scholarship program uh, we were sued by the ACLU and we found out that uh, our teachers union was part of that so uh, the trust was broken at that point. Uh, we continued forward anyway and really tried to work together on all of these things we're talking about today and um, at the end of the day we put 25 items on the table through an open negotiations process that was a, an important part of this whole story because uh, we and the union agreed to do open negotiations we did over a hundred hours on tape posted on our website where we had the opportunity really to publicly tell everyone including our teachers here are the things we want to do for you here you know it's not that we were going to have this cat and mouse game where uh, we would say, well, we know we can uh, we can give them a three percent raise, so we'll just put a half percent on the table, and then then we'll make them force us to that that point. Instead, we said, this is what we can afford. We can show you the documentation in our finances, and we want to give it to you. So through that process of open negotiations, we got to tell the teachers, the community, what we wanted to do. They got to see who and what we were and what we were putting on the table. We we tried for a hundred hours to come to an agreement on the twenty five things we put on the table. We couldn't get there and uh, the board supported us and, and decided that, that they were just going to let it expire and basically said to the teachers union, you're welcome to come back anytime and, and give us some sort of compromise or work with us and they never did. 